What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Guy Pandemonium, bringing you a quick video here on behalf of Fiori H. Sorry if I butchered that in the comment section on warehouses and how to incorporate them with trade routes and how to really make a thriving warehouse. So we're going to start from my hometown. We're going to go ahead and zoom on in here to the large warehouse. And we're going to start with this overview page. It's just kind of a basics to cover your principal. I know you guys are already probably looking at my cost per day, balance per day, being like, oh my God, he's negative. Why make a video on I've been going in and out of buying and selling my steward just for purposes of how many times I've tried to attempt recording this and going with it. So this is the final run through, guaranteeing it. So here we go. Starting off on overview, usage percentage is how much your warehouse is actually being used for its buying and selling purposes. I kind of look at it as an efficiency factor or an efficiency percentage and I want it to be pretty high. Mean reception is basically what your warehouse is buying you kind of want that to be, you don't want it to be super high, but you want it to at least be higher than mean provision, which is how much your warehouse is selling. So looking over here on the right, the values and options, it gives you kind of a much little, you know, kind of numbers crunch to it versus looking at the graphics of it. Protecting raw materials from trading routes. What this simply does is it has your 10 day demand for your raw materials that you produce out of your businesses. For instance, for me, let's look over here at fruit. Fruit, I produce 47 a day, meaning that my warehouse, if I go back into it here, my warehouse is not going to sell any of those raw materials if it gets to only 470 in stock. Meaning, I can have a thousand, it'll sell it. As soon as it hits 470, they cut it off, it will not be sold, but it can still be sold to the town, just not to trade routes and other various businesses. Protecting all commodities, not, not a thing I really recommend other than when you are in fact building. Um, when you're building and expanding, I like having this checked on because you can go and buy wood and brick and clay and you know everything, all the building materials, I can't remember them all off the top of my head, at a really cheap price and bring them into your warehouse and you will not give any of those to any trade routes, only directly to your town which is what you'll be using to build. So you won't have to worry about buying it at an outlandish price or selling it you know, at an outlandish price. You can kind of stockpile and keep the price relatively low. Receiving no commodities means that no matter what, your warehouse will not take in any commodities from the trade routes. I don't like checking that because we're gonna basically sell the same thing twice. And buying no commodities means that we won't buy any commodities other than the ones that are in this trade with the steward, which I'll dive into. But I, I don't like leaving that one checked because we are going to be buying commodities that our town desperately needs just to sell it at a little bit of an inflated rate. So, looking at commodities, I kind of already have two examples here set up, the wheat and fruit. Wheat is not a commodity that we produce. So, looking at what I have checked, our town produces zero. Our town's quantity is zero. It is checked. Businesses can sell it to the warehouse. However, I have no businesses, so I can't do that. Warehouse to business. I don't have any businesses. Cannot check that. Trade routes to warehouse. This essentially means my warehouse will buy wheat off of the trade routes themselves instead of, you know. Basically, what this function does is you try and undercut the town. If you can give a better price, you can then sell it at an inflated price, which I'll dive into here momentarily. And then the last one is warehouse to trade routes. I had this unchecked because of what I'm doing with wheat. I'm buying it off of the trade routes at a higher price than the town's willing to pay and then selling it to the town. So this will work for a good bit, but eventually the town will have a much better price. Trade routes will sell to the town. And then by the end of the day, you know, two, three days, they're gonna come back and they're gonna start buying out of your warehouse like crazy, which we'll have set up on the steward tab, which is next. Looking at fruits, fruits I do have businesses on. So my businesses are automatically gonna go ahead and sell it to my warehouse, and then my warehouse will sell it to the market and trade routes, which goes over to this one, meaning that I am not going to be having any trade routes sell to my warehouse when I produce on this scale which in turn goes to the next one where my warehouse will sell to the trade routes to take this commodity other places. And this is generally the format you're gonna to wanna to have for the commodities you produce versus the commodities you do not produce. 
and going over to the next tab for the steward. Basically, we'll go ahead and break into this. The max number means that this is the amount my warehouse will buy up towards the stock, meaning I'll only allocate this much room for this stock commodity in my warehouse at this certain price, at 160% of its average, you know, average price. So for instance, wheat. My wheat is gonna buy this commodity. If it's less than zero, of, you know, I have none in stock, then the price will be lower than 64, meaning I will buy for a price much lower than 64 gold. But the max price of 64 means I will not exceed 64 gold to buy this commodity. What does that mean in terms of selling to the market, the town, the trade routes? My, your minimum number essentially is a cutoff point. Anything above 200 in this example is sold at an inflated rate higher than 64 gold. Anything below 200 is sold right at 64 gold. And the reason you want these two numbers, in my opinion, to match for commodities that you do not produce is so that you will not take a negative loss on these items. So hopefully that makes sense for the commodities that we do not produce. If I went through it too fast, just comment down below. Feel free to send me a message. I'll get right back to you. But we're going to go ahead and start on with the next one, which is commodities that we do produce and how you want your stewards set up for these guys. So we're going to go ahead and have already checked because we're going to trade this commodity. Max means that if I have you know less than zero of this in stock, it's going to be price lower. Meaning, if there's none in stock, I'm not going to you know I'm going to buy it at a max price of 48. I have like 5,000 of this commodity in stock, so this is something that I absolutely do not need to worry about realistically for pricing purposes. Um, I think the average price of it is actually like 64 gold right now or 62 gold or something like that in my town. So essentially what this is having me do is my warehouse is going to buy this commodity as much as it can for 48 gold. Now when I go to sell it either to warehouse or not warehouse to trade routes and markets and the town's people, basically I'm selling it no matter what with my minimum being zero. Uh, zero, you know, in stock. Me, that means that anything I have in stock in my warehouse is going to be sold at a price of 60 and up. Where this comes into play is when you start buying it. You know, I can buy a ton of it at 48 gold. It sits in my warehouse. It's not really causing me any grief. It's a negative number for the moment being. But if, for instance, if a plague starts or if I don't receive any on trade routes, the town gets hungry. They're going to go ahead and start buying from my warehouse, which is going to net me at least a 12 gold profit off of each item. So that's similar how you're kind of doing this. When you're buying a commodity that you do not produce, you're buying it at this max price, and then you're basically saying, I'll sell it to the community, the town, businesses, at a price that's a little bit higher. And you can set, for instance, this 64 gold I set, wheat's value is only 60 gold. Meaning trade routes are going to come in, instead of selling it to 60 to the town, they're going to sell it to 64 to my port. Meaning I'm going to buy it for 64, the town will be short supplied, which will force them to have to buy it from my warehouse at a price greater than 64. Now how this ties in with trade routes that you create from my previous video, the trade routes from my previous video are designed to make sure that your commodities you produce stay in line at around the average price which is the two green bars two red bars side by side and when you have that figured out and that's all set and good and you can go for weeks and that average line doesn't move then that's when you really want to start diving into warehouses to really start causing a demand in your town for these supplies or create a surplus in your town that sells directly to your warehouse so that other places have to then buy at a much higher price. So I will try to keep this video short and sweet for you guys. The last one I did was super, super long. It was like 30, 40 minutes. If this was not an in-depth guide enough, please feel free to comment down below. Hopefully you understand a little bit more on warehouses. If you don't, comment, shoot me a message. I'll get with you. If it's something I need to explain, I can always make a part two to this video that details exactly what it is you're looking for. 
So guys, I want to thank you guys for uh, following the channel, for the subscribers that keep coming. I want to appreciate you guys a little bit. And Fiori H, thanks for the video that you wanted to see. Hopefully this helps. If it doesn't, let me know. And uh, we'll, we can discuss it, figure it out. But to everyone else that's out there, thank you for stopping by. Please like, comment, subscribe, do whatever. Just let me know where I'm at with this video. If you have any other ideas, tips, or anything I may have missed, please feel free to let me know. Greatly appreciate it. Until next time, guys, have a great one. And if you have any recommendations, please feel free to drop it down in the comments below. And if it's something I can do for you, I'll send you a message, reply to it, and let you know when you can expect that video. So if you're I record this Thursday night for you. It should be uploaded a day earlier than I said on Friday. But I hope you guys all have a great one. Peace.